Welcome back to the Ogre Project, the full painting guide where I try to show you everything on a single miniature. Moving on to the very small details on our ogre now. Starting off with our ropes. Those are base coated with beige brown and now we are applying the highlights with a mix of beige brown and beige. For the first two coats we are just trying to paint the rope as one solid object. So beige brown goes on everything and as well as the beige beige brown mixture. The only difference that we leave the original beige brown in the recesses. For our second coat of straight beige, now we're starting to pick out the details on the ropes, all those little loops. And then finally, to really define all our loops, we are applying a ink wash with glaze medium added. Glaze medium slows down the drying time and also helps to prevent any tide marks from forming in the ink. Uh, this is doubly important here because we want a good dark line between the ropes and the underlying area. We want real clear definition. So that's why we're going with a fairly dark wash. That's also the same reason why we went with beige for the color here, because we want good definition between the color of the ropes and the underlying clothing color or whatever you happen to be painting. So we have a very light color beige against a medium green clothing, and then that's well defined with nice dark sepia wash. Time for a little skull painting, and I have two different skulls here that I painted two different ways. I've omitted the second skull because I thought it was just a wee bit too repetitive, but I painted that one with a little bit more of a, a green shade. Bone, you can paint a wide variety of different colors, anything from uh, medium browns to almost pure whites. I went for something off-white, a little bit darker than off-white here, since we have sort of a grungy ogre figure a, a darker color would look nicer than a nice clean skull. There is some minor amount of layering going on here, but as you can see the paint's being more applied with a stipple pattern and that helps to differentiate it from the surrounding area. So the different pattern on the skull means it's a different material than the skin or the clothing or what have you. Time to paint the hair, and I decided to go for a somewhat of a salt and pepper look because I had the idea that this is an ogre chieftain, so he's got a little bit of age to him. Uh, however, I didn't want to go with straight black and white, so I decided to use some browns instead to make it blend in better to all the browns we're using elsewhere on the figure. You can see here we're using a combination of dry brushing and a bit of regular brushing. We do a general coat with a dry brushing and then areas where I want to highlight we will actually paint instead of against the grain we'll go with the grain to build up colors in those areas.
coming up to our final highlight and this is much more contrast than I would normally add to hair but again we are trying to get a salt and pepper look so we want both the dark and the light uh, the hair did come out a little bit more gray than what I had imagined in my head however I think it still works for the piece One extra little bit of detail I tried to add was some chest hair and same colors as we used on the head. However, we have glaze medium added to make it a bit more transparent. Uh, it's just a bunch of little squiggly lines essentially. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work too well because we don't have a large enough surface to actually accomplish it. Uh, most of the chest is covered up, so I just got a little bit of a tuft showing. And it'd be much more dramatic if there was just more surface area to work that effect upon. For the club, pretty much starts out the exact same way as the hair because the detail is pretty much the same. We have a elongated, sculpted texture to it, so we could paint those the exact same way. It's the only difference here is it's a larger surface. So we are starting off with the dry brush method, and then as we start getting towards the tip of the club, we're gonna switch to a more uh, lengthwise brush stroke to start adding more detail to wherever I want it. This is a good example of a non-overhead lighting paint scheme. So rather than the traditional highlights on the top, shadow on the bottom look. Uh, I'm actually highlighting towards the end of the club and it's the same process, it's just pointed in a different direction essentially and doing this to get some uh, variation in the club. So rather than just a straight solid color brown piece of wood, it actually fades to a different color towards the end and that adds a, a little bit of extra detail, makes things look a little bit more interesting. So our concentration here is on, it's more on variation other than painting highlights and shadows. Finishing up with a little bit more variation to the club with some very thin green ink. Just adding a little bit of a colored wash towards the end, opposite end that we highlighted. And this helps once again to tie it in to our ogre because remember we have a little bit of green in the skin, we have the green clothing, and it adds more variation to the club. We will follow this up with a mix of black and green ink to give us a real good definition on the wood grain of the club and help really define any of those little knot holes. And it could also be used to redefine areas where we were a little bit too crude with the dry brushing and it filled in any details. That is it for this one and join me very soon for the last part. Watch out for snakes!